All right, the hood has been basted on. After the hood's basted, then pull it out, look at it up right side out. Zip the zipper up, make sure that the hood comes across the front of your jacket and aligns straight off. It will look really funny if your hood is aligning like this. And so zip up, make sure that your seam is coming straight across and that you align. Your two buttonholes should be, and if you look, you can see that eighth of an inch. It should be an eighth of an inch above that seam allowance and be aligned as well. If that is good and you have no tucks, then you are ready now to apply and, and attach the bias tape. And the bias tape binding is a single fold bias tape. And if you look at this bias tape, single fold bias tape actually has two folds. That it folds from both edges towards the center and that is called single fold bias tape. And you were instructed to purchase half inch wide single fold bias tape. Double fold bias tape has a third fold and would be folded in half. One, uh, one with, with an extra fold in there as to what we have with double fold bias tape or single fold bias tape. So even though there's two folds, it's really a single fold bias tape. You need a piece that is the length of that neckline edge, plus you want it to stick out an inch to an inch and a half beyond the front of the jacket there. The one other thing you want to check with your hood is you want to recheck and make sure that alignment of the hood coming up from the front of the jacket is exactly straight, that your hood is not sitting back recessed in or extending beyond the front of the jacket. You want to make sure that it's lined up and lined up square. When that's good and your basting is good, then you are going to lay this bias tape along the edge of your basting. And if you will lay it on the hood side, so you can see here's my hood, there's the, the lining of the hood, the casing of my hood. I lay this bias tape along that edge so that the fold of the bias tape sits just barely past my basting. And then if I do that, and I pull the folded edge back out now, and then pin this in place, when I sew this, I'm going to be sewing in that fold. And I would like my basting to wind up inside my seam allowance. So I'm going to set this again right next to the edge of that basting. So the basting is inside the seam allowance and then open the edge of the bias tape up and insert a pin. When you've got this pinned all the way around, then check and make certain that the opposite folded edge can lay smoothly where you put that so that when we're the second when we're ready for the next step it sews along and works well there and now we're going to go to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch right in that fold attaching the bias tape to the jacket and the hood all right so we come to the sewing machine line your um, needle up drop the needle so that it goes right down into the fold and then Go ahead and begin stitching and then you will back stitch. Be very careful if you had to change the size of your zipper because remember you will have the zipper teeth running right along the edge there and so you want to be certain that you don't hit those zipper teeth. It will break your needle if you hit those zipper teeth. And so you may want to hand wheel through that spot in order to be certain that you don't hit, that, hit the zipper teeth. Periodically look up underneath, make sure that the jacket itself is laying smooth because you are looking at the, at the hood. And notice that my pins are fairly close together. The more you pin, the less likely you will be to get a tuck and have to unpick something. And I'm picking on fleece is a little bit difficult because the stitches tend to embed or bury themselves down into the fabric. And the other thing that you'll see that I'm doing is pushing down with my fingertips as I sew. I'm kind of feeling, if you will, to see and to make certain that the area that I'm stitching is flat. And so I'll pick up and look and make sure that I look good. And then I kind of give it a squish and hold to make certain that it lays smooth and flat. And you will stitch all the way across the neckline from jacket front to jacket front. Back stitching out of both ends. Okay, 
Okay, I am approaching now the area where I have my zipper laying on the side, my teeth, so I'm just going to hand wheel and make certain that I don't happen to hit the teeth and, and pop the needle and break the needle here. That's a good thing I did, because I would have hit it right there. And I'm going to tie a knot at the back stitch on that side. So when you're done, then you will just take your bias tape, fold it up on the edge, look and make sure that you have no tucks along the hood, and ideally you won't see any stitching that you have stitched just next to that basting and it winds up not showing. If you're good on the hood side, check the jacket side. Make sure you don't have tucks. Go ahead and pull the hood up. So you're actually looking at the jacket and making sure you didn't catch anything. If you're good, we're ready to trim and grade. After you've stoned the bias tape on and you've checked it, the idea is this bias tape is going to cover your seam allowance. You can see that my half inch wide bias tape is that eighth of an inch narrower than my five eighths inch seam allowance and so I'm going to need to trim and grade. We're going to follow the rule of the widest to the world, and this is going to be stitched down against the jacket. And so the seam allowance is going to head down, which means that when I trim, my jacket will be 3 eighths of an inch, my hood fashion fabric will be 5 sixteenths, and my hood lining will be a quarter. Or because these are knits, I'm going to go slightly narrower than that. I'm going to go just under 3 eighths, just under 5 sixteenths, and just under a quarter, and trim those seam allowances. And so if I trim that, start trimming the jacket here, you can see I can trim the jacket, and then I can trim the hood just slightly shorter than the jacket is. And then come and trim my hood lining even shorter so that you wind up with just a slightly beveled edge. And then when the bias tape is now folded up, you can see my bias tape is longer than on my seam allowances. And so I'm going to continue trimming that, trimming my jacket to just less than 3 eighths. Again, when we're sewing with knits we can trim and grade a little bit narrower than when we're sewing with wovens because it's not going to fray. And especially when we are sewing with a knit that is bulky, where the part, one of the things that we're working on is to reduce bulk, we're going to trim it and grade it even a, a little bit narrower than what you normally would. And so I've got those areas, and so I'm going to go ahead and trim and grade, and then we'll get back with you in a minute. All right, this piece of bias tape now that, has, that is now longer or wider than your seam allowance, this is actually a facing. It's a bias tape facing. And so if you remember, one of the things that we do with, inter with facings is understitch them. And understitching is sewing the facing to the seam allowances. And what that does is compress or compact the seam, so it's going to help reduce some bulk and it's going to help to strengthen that seam line there. And so I'm just going to line my facing up. And I can back stitch here because this will wind up inside my jacket. Even though it is on the right side of the facing, the entire facing will, line, will wind up inside the jacket. If, as you are understitching, you will just take the time to Check underneath, make sure you don't have any tucks. And then kind of use your fingers like we have before to press down that facing against the um, fleece fabric, giving it a little bit of a squish. And so 
it will help to reduce the bulk of that seam along the neckline and it will make the next step that you're about to do a little bit easier. You'll actually take and understitch the spacing. And so you will understitch it all the way across the neckline edge, backstitching at the far side, and then we will be ready to pin the facing in place and then stitch it in place. Okay. We're ready for the last step in completing and enclosing our, our seam on our on our neckline edge. If, again, you have your zipper that is too long, this is the place now where you are going to trim the top of that off. We didn't do it before for the fear that as you tried this on and off, you would zip up and zip right off the end of the zipper. And so we kept that on until we were ready now to enclose this. And so I am going to come back now and trim out. And you want to leave about three quarters of an inch of zipper tape with that turn there. So I'm going to trim out that extra zipper tape. The bias tape is actually going to fold over the edge and you want about an inch of fold over. So I'm going to take that and just truly fold it over the seam which enc then encloses the front edge of all those seam allowances against the zipper and then I'm going to take and lay that down right next to the zipper. Now if you have had to elongate your, or had to shorten your zipper, excuse me, had to shorten your zipper, you will have zipper teeth right here along this edge. And so I'm enclosing those zipper teeth that were laying against my seam allowance there. And you just pin that edge. Okay. If as you pin it, you will take your hand, apply just a little bit of tension against that seam allowance, and then with the hand that's up in the hood, lay that bias tape down against your jacket. Give it a bit of a squish and a press. Have your pin head down into your jacket and then back up into that bias tape, flattening the tape out. Okay. Now you'll see up here on the neck edge, you will see that folded edge of the top of your zipper, of your zipper tape. You will see that for that little half inch that it's extending. and then it will disappear, but you will see that for that little edge right there by, the, by your zipper. And so you'll just continue around your jacket doing that same type of a technique. Put a little, a little bit of pressure against that seam, make sure it lays smooth and flat, and then with your hand in your hood, take your fingers and press that bias tape down flat against the hood of the jacket. Putting your pin in and out against the edge. Now remember when we pinned the bias tape on, I had you check and make certain that this outside edge here laid flat against the hood and had extra, plenty of extra fabric. The reason for that is as you are pinning it down to your jacket here, back to the idea of circumference of circles, this half inch further into your jacket is, has a longer distance than your neckline edge, and so your bias tape actually has to stretch or give just a little bit from the neckline edge out to that folded edge. And so you wanted to make sure that you have plenty of fabric. And so you will continue pinning this around to the other end. So when you get off, pinned all the way around to the other side, you will do the same thing. You'll take the end of that bias tape, wrap it around the seam allowance, and tuck that down and flat. Then after it's pinned, then you are going to turn your jacket over and look at it from the outside, making certain that this outside neck edge lays smooth. So you're going to head all the way around the neck looking to make sure that it lays smooth along that neckline seam and that in the process of pinning you didn't accidentally catch a piece of the jacket and wind up having a bubble that would be up there along the neckline edge. So we're going to come along that neckline edge here and just check and make certain that that looks good all the way around. And if it looks good, then we are ready to sew it. All right, when it's pinned in place and you are pleased with the way that it sits, you'll come to the sewing machine and you are going to edge stitch the outer edge of this facing that you've now understitched. You will edge stitch the outer edge of that facing down in place. 
So you are edge stitching from the inside, but when you flip your jacket over, it will be top stitched along the jacket, and you are sewing on your jacket, not on your hood. So yes, you've got to stay on your facing, but you've also got to be cautious and cognizant of the fact you need to stay the same distance from this seam line edge as you are sewing, so that when you turn it over, your top stitching is the same distance from that seam line edge on the outside. If your jacket is like mine and you had to shorten the zipper out the top, you will have zipper teeth right there folded inside and hidden in this binding at that neckline edge. Be a little cautious while you're by that edge so that you don't hit the zipper teeth and that the zipper teeth do not force you off the edge as you are sewing. And you can see that it would be very easy to get a tuck if you're not careful. So go slow. You are basically sewing from pin to pin to pin. This bias tape has give in it because it is cut on the bias. So this outside style edge of the tape can be stretched and made a little bit longer than that inside edge so that your tape can lay flat against your jacket as you sew. If you will use your fingers to kind of help press the seam down flat, that understitching helps the seam to be pressed a little bit flat. But use your fingers to help press it flat as you sew, and then both hands to help by applying just a little bit of pressure against the seam to help define that de define to help define that neckline seam edge. as you're sewing along. And you will continue this technique around to the front of the jacket. This is probably the most difficult part of making the jacket is getting this bias binding to lay flat and to lay smooth and to be somewhat, um, your stitching, to be somewhat straight on the right hand side or on the outside of your fashion fabric when you're through. But again, by applying some pressure as you sew, that will help to make certain that that occurs. Do not back stitch at either end. It, is just, it does show on the right side of your fabric, and so when, you, when, you, when I started, you noticed I didn't backstitch, and now that I am here to the other end, I won't backstitch either. I will just pull a thread through and tie a knot. thread tail long enough that you can tie a knot and then check the outside edge look around look across it make sure that your stitching looks straight and that you don't have any areas where you left a bubble because you didn't get it pulled flat when that's done you'll pull those two threads through tie a knot thread the extra threads onto a hand sewing needle and bury those threads inside the tunnel inside your inside your fabric here and your jacket is done